Good morning, YouTube. It's Casey here from KR Graphics, and this is in its um, it's, it's 32 degrees in Boston, kind of snowy, you know, rather wintry outside today. And right now, I have a little video for you guys. Um, if you guys seen my uh, previous upload, I uh, I shared with you um, some of my R and D of um, for creating skies for the game, the game makers like um, Unity, Unreal Four. And today, I decided to um, show you. Uh, you a quick little video on how I go about creating the skies and how I process them. So without further ado, let's begin right here. Um, so what you're seeing here is um, a program that I use um, for creating my skies and atmospheres. It's called um, this is View um, Studio 2015 by Eon Software, and it's pretty. I've had this for a number of years, and it's pretty, pretty, good, really good program for doing skies like this. I really you know, yeah, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything without this program for for skies. And not only that, I don't. I don't have the luxury of um, having a SLR camera and taking pictures of skies all day long and coming home and finding with time. Um, with this, I could just render it and be done with it. Um, this uh, particular sky is going to be part of my, part to the experiment. I am. Um, I actually. I actually. Um, I think I waited like what a day and a half to surrender. About three or six hours in at 4K, and I think that's pretty it's pretty long to be rendering anything. But and I'm on a laptop too, so it's but that's why it took so long to render this. Um, but anyway, um, for this for this for this um for this little overview, I uh, chose I chose a sky that's um you know the still the still hit a blue in it. There's some clouds, and there's also um there's also a sun, which is the strongest part of the sky. I um I also saved this um. You know the file is as a 16-bit TIFF, and of course, some people will ask me, "Well, can you just save out an HDR image from here and put it in Unity?" You can, but you know, for me, of course, what if, what if um, well, for me personally, I kind of feel like you know, just um, using an HDR image is cool and everything, but that's not enough for me. I want a little. I like I like having control of my final output. So this this is the process I go through when I create my skies. Anyway. Um, this image is just rendered here. This is this is going to be partially the brightest point in my uh, my sky. I'm actually going to go ahead and change the, the exposure value a little bit here. And basically, when you're doing the HDR thing of um, your images, you want at least three exposures. It's like taking photo. It's like taking a photograph with an SLR camera. You want to take as many shots as possible that get that get that get lighter and then darker. The darkest, the darkest image will have the brightest point, like the sunlight, which is pretty important in your renders. And then I save it as a TIFF. Um, if, and also, too, you might notice that I, I'm, I, will, I will not be using um, Photoshop's um, Merge to HDR feature because I kind of feel that feature is cool and everything, but I feel like I don't, I don't gain enough control over it. You know, and basically, Photoshop is um, well, it's great and everything. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need tools that are a little, a little stronger. For what I need to do, so I'm, I'm going to save these um, images now in, my, in the form in the format that I need. And this format will be used. These formats will be used for um, for my game. Um, this is for one of the levels. Like, you know, I want some clouds and a little overcast, a little overcast, not, not, really, not really overcast, but some blue. I'm just going to save these some of these exposures. You know, and the best part about and also to the um, this is also quite an elegant solution because um, only photographer, only photographers, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes like, especially if you use sky, like a use a sky for a, for a video game based on an actual photograph, you know, you have to go in there and you know use the um, the clone brush and clean, use the clone brush to move the sun from the photo from the photograph. Um, here I could I could just turn the sun turn the sun off and render it normal. I mean, that'll, that'll save you a hell of a lot of time, which is great, which is good, which is good for us, you know, and I'm, you know, when it comes to my work, I'm a total control freak. Yeah, so for those of you who saw the r and video, it's a, it's a nice little way to light your levels using a light like that. So I'm going to save this last exposure. Now this is, this is um, plus one, this is um, the brightest value possible. And let me make sure I'm saving everything in a... Bit. It's important to save in 16 bits. If you save in 8 bits, you won't get you won't you will not you will not get that range. 
you need for the final for the final piece. Just quick, I was quickly going to create the exposures, the feed bits. I kind of wish I kind of wish it was a faster way to do this, but um, this is um pretty elegant solution. And also too, I believe um programs like World Builder and Terragen do this. In fact, Terragen is a I tried Terragen recently. I think they're on version four now, and the uh, the HDR output is out of this world. Basically, e even for some odd reason, um, I can't get the full range in view that Terragen has. I'm kind of right now just going to my sports room before we go to the next step. And it's important to make sure you have um, at least 16 bits. Um, Unity, if you're using Unity 5.5, it, um, it now supports on um, HDR format. I think. I think it's floating point, 16 bit floating point now. Um, I tried 32 bit earlier today and it wouldn't, it wouldn't import, so that tells me something. So basically, um, now, that, now we have our, our three shots saved out, for exposures. I'm gonna go to another program that I use. It's, um, called, it's called um, FDR Tools Basic. I'm gonna go back and, I was doing this earlier. That's what I did, but I'll show you how I go about doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead now and delete these three images, and then we're bring it back in. Now with this program, um, so out of region, even if, even even if it's a TIFF, you have to unfortunately use the all format. Some odd reason because it um it won't, it won't it, I could put general generic TIFF and it won't show it won't show anything. All right, so let me go ahead now and select my Motor Valley Sky, which is actually the name of my level I'm working on right now. Yeah, so this there, I'm going to go ahead and edit, and what's going, what's going to happen is this program is going to load all of our images. Um, three is enough. Um, I think for this particular program, using three is enough. Um, any more than that's kind of overkill. So basically, this is the sky how it looks now before it's processed, and you'll see here the uh, dynamic range is 18, which is great. It's it's, it's pretty bright. And what you want, what you really want is you really want the skies to be bright. You know, if you look at the bottom here, this program, I'll also, I'll also include a link, put a link to, um, to this pro to this software program, as well as, um, my recent video. If you look at the bottom here. These are the, these are the pixel values for, for your, um, in H, for your, um, HDR format. So right now, below in the sky, it's like, if you look at the bottom slowly, it's going to show you, like, 20,000, 920,000. That's pretty bright. And of course, the computer, my screen, my laptop, or any, any machine for that matter, can't display this properly. It's kind of why we import a tone map this, which we'll do now. So I'll go to tone mapping, and I'm going to change some settings here to ensure that the sun is the brightest part of the sky. So I'm going to go to compression, I'm gonna go to compression real quick and change it to um, something pretty high up there. You notice how the sun will bright, the sun brighten up a little bit. Sun, I want the um, the sun's corona to be, to be, really a clean corona of the sun. And next, we take the exposure. You know, no one should have to do this, but I do, I do it just for my own sanity, so that I get the brightness I want. Dynamic range, we turn up a little bit. In, in a dynamic range, we want this here to be dark as possible. We do not want any lighting information from, from this bottom. Um, in fact, if you use View or World Builder for that matter, or even TerraGem, there's a feature that will think you can create a mask in your scene. I'm not sure how to do that in TerraGem, but in View, it's pretty easy. Just um, create an infinite plane and put a black material on it. Alright, so let's go to. Um, Little black, like black point, and this and this will add some contrast to the clouds a little bit. Are you sure it looks weird here, but you'll see in Unity in a minute when we, when we get to that point. Keep them. Uh, I'm tweaking this in um, linear. I think I'm gonna go to a lot of rhythmic and see how here the, the value of that sun is two forty two something I mean, some two hundred forty two thousand. Value of pixels. That's a lot, that's pretty bright. Um, in most HDR photographs, the sun is easy like a hundred thousand pixel, hundred thousand value, value hundred thousand. That's pretty. That's pretty damn bright. 
for a son. And we, we, want, the, we want the brightness in the game. So, although, 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 although we're going to be replacing this sun with a light, with an in engine light, with a flare on it. Let me, let me just can you tweak it just a little bit. To get a little bit of contrast in the sky. That's good for now, for example. Pretty good. You know, you, you, usually, correct my process, I will tweak this until I'm happy with it. I mean, basically, I mean, of course, you know, it's I mean, for a sky, it's uh, the biggest thing, the biggest thing in your game. And I'm, you know, the artist myself, sure, sure, I want to physically accurate, but I also want some sort of creative control over this guy's look. So there we pretty good right there. That should be enough for our needs for now. I'm going to save it. And when I save it, I'm going to use um, Open EXR format, which is um, it's it's just like HDR, but you know it holds it, it holds a lot of color information, and it's also known as a floating point format, which is great. So I'm gonna, I did it already, but I'm going to save it again. Let's go ahead and show you. So I hit save. I've already done the Q mapping community. And I have saved on Unity now and let it and let it build. Um, and also Unity to also Unity as well. I'll, I'll when it loads up, I'll show you the um the values you would choose via Q map for Unity. And you also want to ensure you have um Reflection probes, you know, light pro reflection probes for reflection of the environment. You also want probes. You also want a um, light light probe volume for of huge levels that require lighting changes. And one of the great things about this is that with the with the changes in the sky, I can I can have like a deep blue sky or a sunset, and it will and it will um it will um light the scene beautifully. Yeah? this real quick so yeah so basically you go to our sky you want to go to your um, your map and see what it looks like so so, so you do also this you go on uni 5 5 you will change your your, your texture shape you will change the shape from um from 2d to cube and this is any case a cube map and, and that's pretty much it really um in this right here I keep this off but I don't know why it's on, but I keep it off in my, in my scenes. I also go to um, repeat by linear, and I change the um, compression to BC6H. I guess that's the new compression format for um, HDRs. So anyway, I'm going to lighting panel, and I'm going to clear my I'm going to clear lighting. And also to also to my experiment, you saw in my last video. There's no light in my scene. The um, Industrial lighting has been turned off. Has been turned off. This is to ensure that um, this is to ensure that I get I can light my level like let's say like I do an overcast sky or a cloudy day. You know, in the sun, in the, in the clouds are blocking the sun. This kind of scenario would be perfect for it. So I'm going to hit build. And basically, it seems simple, so it won't take very long. But in bigger scenes, you have to wait. Because um, you also I'm I'm also using uh, real time, real time GI, which is um really great for um scene like this. And, I'm, and I let me think too that after this video, I'm gonna figure out how to keep this scene as as a Unity default. I mean I think I think Unity I think this particular shot here is really beautiful. I love how it looks. And of course, and of course, it's got of course it's got, of course, it's contrasting the clouds. The sky is still blue. Here we go. And a moment of truth. Now, of course, this will, this will take a, this will take a while. So, if you have a big scene, you know, go to lunch or go, go for a walk outside or something until it finishes. Um, I'm, I'm hoping in Unity 5.6 to release the, the light mapper tool for progressive light mapping, and it'll make this process a lot, a lot easier. Let's give it a little more time. To, um, calculate here. Oh, and also to the um, 
also reflection probes also um support um what's this thing also the um reflection probes now support um photo point sixteen bits I believe and here's our uh, the results of our experiment I must say I'm pretty impressed with that you know I was um I, I was I was impressed with this the RED for this you know it actually lights very beautifully. And also one thing too to note as well in this particular shot is you also want to have your um make sure that your camera your camera is set to HDR and you have um a toe mapper tool toe mapper on the camera. So in five five now there's a tool called the script here called um post processing and you basically want that your you basically want that on your um your camera and create a profile so that you can tweak the, the look of your scene. Right, let me go back to my um, FDR tools a little bit and make it a little brighter. For some reason I love I love bright shot. I love the, I love the brightness of like um, the clouds and all that stuff. Now, usually it's trial and error. I try to get a, a feel for the clouds there. And that's and only that too. The best part about um, Unity, well, well Unity's um, pipeline is um, I can work I can work I can work on textures and models and. Anything I, anything I do save will automatically update, which is amazing to me. I couldn't, I couldn't work without that. Um, and I'm, and I'm in the sun now is 200, 262, 499. And that's not an illusion. That's a full range of your, of your sky here. And I'll add a little saturation to this. You add, you add a little blue back into the, into the sky a bit. And then, of course, hit save. And also to and also to um, it's important if you it's important too to have your sky in lat long format. I am um, I tried doing the um, cube map method and it takes too long to do. So this is a quicker method for me. What you name? It will give it time to actually update. I apologize for any kind of frame drops you see in the video. Um, Creating cube maps, rendering cube maps, and adding to them at times is a very, very intensive operation. So let's give it a little time to calculate there. And thankfully, this is a simple, a simple scene. Um, a bigger scene would take, take even longer than this, which is, which is good for us, you know, because you, you know, if you want quality in your game, this is the way you're going to get it, lighting wise. And also, a secret I have too is um, if you look in the um, you know. Light attack here. I change the intensity of the ambience to like three. It seems kind of extreme, but you know, this is what I do to get better lighting. And go to the reflection probe real quick and reach face bacon again. That's a kind of fixed fix it a little bit. There we go. So now, if I go ahead and make a, a scene a little bit, you now have you now have a beautiful, beautifully lit environment. You see the details on Harris skin, as well as the gleam of the of the world on his armor, which is what you want for a skybox. And before I go, I'll go ahead and drop another shot, I'll drop another skybox in here to, to show you the differences in quality you get. Um, this one's a this one's a clear sky. You notice how because it's real time GI, it changed the whole scene changed. And I'll usually just big I'll usually just big do a quick big the um. Probe to see how it looks. You know, basically, whatever you change your sky, whatever you change your sky, you want to make sure you update your, your probe, your lighting as well. And notice how nice little blue tinge there. Um, beautiful to me. This is this is perfect for like a new, for like an afternoon kind of scene. You know, and the sun's in the sky still. So in fact, I think for this sun, I gotta fix it actually. A little bit hazy. It's a little bit hazy, so I gotta fix that one. But um, yeah, it's you know it's pretty simple. We'll create a create a um a sky a, a, a great sky with a lot of detail there. You know, so anyway, um, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to see this this video overview. I hope you um you know learn a, learn a few tricks from me on how to create your skies. You know whether it's in view or world builder or Terrigen or any. Or any or any program you use to generate skies. Um, as always, any questions, any questions you may have, um, feel free to leave a comment in the box or just say hey.
And also, also feel free to subscribe to my channel. I usually have some pretty good stuff, you know, on my channel for rendering to game development, insight, and things of that nature. So, on behalf of Chaos, on behalf of Chaos Graphics, this is Casey saying, have a super day, enjoy, and happy arting. Over and out.